Welcome to another installation as we work on our Sanyo guinea pig. And once again, uh, we've, uh, we've created a fault on this machine. Uh, this time to simulate a shorted capacitor uh, in the drum servo circuit. So our symptom in this case is we install the tape and the tape just comes right back out. Now what someone might at first think is, aha, we have a mode switch problem. And a mode switch problem could cause that. But generally when you have a mode switch problem, other things tend to work. Watch what happens when we load the tape. Pay attention to the drum. You notice that it's not... It's spinning, but it's not coming up anywhere near to the proper speed. It has torque, but it's not, it's not spinning like it should. This is our first giveaway here is that something is preventing that drum from spinning up to normal speed. How these drum or how these circuits all operate is they work off what's called a sample and hold gate. They measure the voltage and if the voltage is too low, they will speed up or too high, they will slow down. That's how they determine the speed. And that voltage when it's sampled is stored in a capacitor. If the capacitor that's storing the servo feedback voltage is either open or shorted, the DC offset will be incorrect. On this unit here, and I, I'm picking on this particular VCR because the drum servo is on top, of the chassis on many VCRs this part the drive IC and the servo circuits are below the chassis and you've got to take the chassis out to work on so I'm, I'm picking on this one particular machine just because it's a machine that's easy to service now I, you're probably noticing right now that there are pins that are shorted here and you're thinking aha that's what he's done he just shorted some pins but that's not the case. That's not the problem. They were like that from the factory. Those pins that are bridged. I would have think that those are probably the power pins. Let's get the meter out here and just see what they are. Yeah, 13 volts and ground. That's why those pins are bridged together. It's because that's the main supply power from the main chassis. That's the power supply of the, the 13 volts for the drop to run the motor. This IC here is, is not only the drive IC that drives the, it's a three phase motor. So it's not only generating the three-phase waveform to spin the motor, but it's also controlling the speed and the phase. So on here, we're going to have a PG pulse that goes back to the uh, head switching circuit. And we're going to probably have a, a, a drum run and stop line to tell it to turn on or off. So let's just see what does what. Okay, that one's at zero, so when I put the tape in, that one goes up to four volts. So that's what's telling the drum to turn on, that pin. That's pin number one. 
Pin number two was the uh, supply line. Pin number three is also at zero. It's actually point one. So that one might be the feedback. That one might be the feedback voltage. Uh, pin four is going to be ground. What is pin five? Pin five is also at zero. It kind of goes up a little bit, but not to the five volts. This is the one that's telling the drum to turn on this line here. If we uh, bring that line up a bit, I'm just going to grab a, a resistor. Gonna pull that line up and see whether if I if I pull up this one pin whether it will start the drum rotating, which it does. But here we can see that it's not spinning up to the type of speed that we would like. So if I Connect that test point again. I'm not soldering this in. I'm just connecting this test point. This drum motor should spin right up, but it's not. You see, if I, I'm just using a 400 and let's say a 470 ohm resistor here, just to. It's hard for you to see. I'm just going between that test point there. Okay, we'll just tack it down to the 12 volt rail. This is easy. Now when I tickle that power on you can see the drum is coming on but it's not getting anywhere near to the speed it should be getting to this thing should be spinning up to 1800 rpm but it's not it's going very slow so there must be a reason for it going slow we must be missing a voltage So we get our meter out and we'll just start checking for voltages around in here and see. I got, oops, let's zoom this camera back so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm just checking for some voltages on some of these capacitors and so forth. See, first of all, if we've got any shorts. The uh, inputs to the, the chip are right here. These are these are sample and hold capacitors here. So we test the test point here. We've got 2.2 volts. We look at this one here. We've got uh, 0.1 looks like. What about when we try to start it? Okay, that one's going up when we try to start it. And the next one over, we've got 0.9 when we try to start the motor. One volt. And this last one here, we get zero. And it's only going to point one. And the other side of this, it's going to a going through a resistor, going over to this side of the IC. Oh, 3.7 volts. That's a that's an interesting reading, because most servos try to run it around three and a half volts. That's three and a half is typically when you're at your speed. The voltage goes above three and a half volts. It's generally calling for more speed. If voltage goes below three and a half volts. It's calling for less speed. And looking at this, this might be the feedback loop right here on this. I'm gonna zoom the camera in here so you guys can see it a little better. That's as close as this camera gets. Our feedback loop looks like it's this from this IC here. This pin over in the corner. It comes out, there's a little test point here. And then it goes through R5 resistor. Comes down and it looks to be filtered by capacitor C4. Which is this capacitor right here. So if I test, if I put my test point on 
or to put my probe on our test point and I try to load the tape it goes right up to like 3.8 volts and then it, it shuts down the reason it's shutting down is because the, the system is detecting that the drum is not spinning up because the drum is not spinning up the system is thinking that something is jamming the drum but on the other side of this resistor, and I can, I can demonstrate that by, if I just force the drum to start. See, our voltage is going up. Like it's calling for, it's calling for the drum to speed up. But I go to the other side of this resistor and it's zero. So I'm thinking maybe we have a short circuit in this side of the circuitry. So I put my meter over to uh, Ohm's testing. Now let's just take a look at some of these little capacitors down here. Just see if we got a short. Because this is this is the type of symptom that you'd find if you have a shorted a shorted uh, cap. So that one's okay. That one's not shorted. That one's not shorted. Oh, what do you know? 0.3 ohms. Do you think 0.3 ohms is too low for a capacitor? I think so. It should be open. So maybe this capacitor is bad. Sure looks that way. It's a little chip component. But I bet it shorted. So let's just uh, take this thing out and replace it. See what fixes our problem. So now we've replaced this capacitor. And we measure it. I'm getting 4.7 mega ohms. That's probably the internal resistance of the, the circuitry. Well, let's just see what happens when we turn on the power and I just apply my startup to the drum. My drum is spinning up now and it's spinning up way too fast. Why? Because we have no control. Let's just try and load a tape. Now that the servo is up and running, will it play? Yes, it will. It will play. Let's turn down the volume. We can uh, simulate that shorted capacitor. You'll see what happens if I put a screwdriver or something across it to short it out. Right? Drum speed drops. Then the unit will shut down. But in this case, the unit never actually got going because it's detecting that the drum was not running. So that's the effect of a shorted sample and hold capacitor and the drum circuit. I almost forgot to uh, show you. When the unit is operating properly, here's our servo circuit, as I was telling you. And we're sitting at three point, about 3.6 volts. If the voltage were to, to change, it changes the speed of the drum. If I slow the drum down manually, you notice that the, the, the voltage changes on the sample and hold. So if I start to slow the drum, the voltage will go up because the servo is now calling to increase the speed. And if I slow the drums substantially and it overshoots, the voltage will actually drop. Lower voltage will mean speed the drum up. Higher or higher voltage means speed the drum up, lower voltage means slow the drum down. And that's why with our, when our capacitor here was shorted, um, the drum wouldn't spin up because it was, it was sitting down at zero volts. Anyway. Enough on drum servos 101. 
I figure something else out to, to do to my guinea pig here and we'll make another one. <laughs>